when you're insulin resistant, that is you've got metabolic syndrome, pretty much every chemical in the body is not quite right. Some are up, some are down, few are actually at physiologically normal levels. Traditionally, the focus is on the big guns, sugar, insulin, and cholesterol. In this series, we take a look at some of the other players, who they are, what they're up to, and how they're part of the state of insulin resistance. In this episode, we contemplate your level of acidity when you're insulin resistant. The pH of your arterial blood is on the high side of normal, resulting in what is commonly referred to as mild metabolic acidosis. The high side of normal. This is not the same as metabolic acidosis, which can be life-threatening. So there is no need to panic. But is it something that you should manage? Well, Dr. Google says definitely and offers suggestions to get you to a more alkaline state. But the science is not so clear. So what is pH? Well, it's a scale that represents the number of protons or hydrogen ions available to do chemistry. It can be a little confusing. Low pH actually corresponds with high levels of protons. This might sound bad, but protons do a lot of chemistry. They're chemical reactions that generate them, and they're chemical reactions that consume them. In fact, one of the most important chemical processes in the body, the generation of ATP, depends on proton pumps. The level of protons guides cells in making decisions. For example, when acid levels are high, cells shift their chemistry so that less is made. This impacts how cells respond to insulin, as well as how much insulin is secreted. In acidic environments, insulin resistance is amplified. This is a physiological effect, not a pathological response, since the normal function of all physiological reactions depends on the appropriate acid-base balance. The pH levels are not left to chance. It's tightly regulated. The pH of your blood depends on the ratio of bicarbonate ions to carbon dioxide levels circulating. The bicarbonate alkalinizes while the carbon dioxide acidifies. And these in turn depend on the kidney and lungs. The levels of bicarbonate are controlled by the kidney, which can generate it from scratch as well as recycle it, while the levels of carbon dioxide are controlled by the lungs through moderating how little or how much carbon dioxide is breathed out. In addition to this universal regulation of pH, there are a multitude of additional buffering systems which fine-tune pH. Individual cells control the acid levels they're exposed to through acid extruding and acid loading membrane transport proteins. These include pumps, exchangers, transporters, channels, and a very busy enzyme called carbonic anhydrase. So what causes metabolic acidosis? Well, it arises in one of three circumstances. Loss of base in the form of bicarb, virenal, or gastrointestinal roots. This is often precipitated by intoxication. It can happen when more acid is produced than the kidneys can excrete because of kidney disease. And abnormal metabolism can cause an excess of acidic substances. This often happens when someone has a heart attack. It's also seen in type 1 diabetics who develop diabetic ketoacidosis. For the record, this is not the same thing as ketosis. In these scenarios, an alkalizing agent, usually bicarbonate salts, is given to provide short-term relief while working to fix the underlying problem. The operative word is short-term. So if you're mildly acidic, should you help out by lending a hand and taking steps to make yourself more alkaline on a daily basis. Well, as I said, Dr. Google suggests this as a go-to strategy. But the short answer is probably not. There is no credible scientific evidence to suggest alkalinizing in and of itself will improve insulin sensitivity. 
although there is evidence to suggest it can give a shot in the arm to a failing kidney. Interestingly enough, the same effects are seen with increased consumption of fruits and vegetables. Go broccoli! When you're insulin resistant, the acidity you're experiencing is a consequence of bad body chemistry, not a cause. And although bicarb is something you can find at a grocery store, swallowing large amounts is not without its own risks. When you swallow bicarb, as it hits the stomach, it reacts to make carbon dioxide. That whoosh of carbon dioxide in your stomach has to go somewhere. You may burp it out, that is, just bubble your troubles away, but you may not. If the carbon dioxide accumulates, it can cause bloating and gastric disturbances. Plus, there's the problem of what the bicarbonate comes with. You see, chemistry dictates that negative ions must always travel with a positive ion. This means the body doesn't just get the benefits of bicarb, it also must handle that positive ion. And too much of these can be problematic. In the case of sodium bicarb, the excess sodium ion puts you at risk of fluid retention. In the case of potassium bicarb, you're at risk of potassium imbalances, which can cause serious arrhythmias. And in the case of calcium carbonate, you can develop milk alkali syndrome. So when all is said and done, it would serve you better to address the things that are putting strain on your buffering capacity, rather than artificially beefing up your buffering capacity. So where is the acid coming from when you're insulin resistant? Well, some people would say it's your diet. You're eating too many acid-producing foods and not enough vegetables and fruit. This may very well be true, but this is not causing the problem per se. It's first and foremost a metabolic problem. As you've learned in the Ups and Downs series, most chemicals are not quite right. Lactate, which morphs into lactic acid, is up. So are free fatty acids and uric acid levels. That's a lot of acidy things that are up, while at the same time your bicarbonate levels are taking strain because insulin influences many of the acid-base transporters. Most notably, insulin promotes the renal sodium bicarbonate transporter. The increased sodium then triggers active secretion of bicarbonate. So how do you clean up your act and address your mild acidosis? Well, best strategy is to deal with the root of the problem. Rain in insulin. For ideas of where to start, download the Willpower Report. It's free. And go ahead, boost your buffering capacity by eating those green vegetables. Here are some of the references I've used to tell the story of metabolic acidosis. Mild metabolic acidosis is just one of hundreds of things in the body that are amiss when you're insulin resistant. Subscribe to our channel to learn more about the other players in our Ups and Downs of Insulin Resistance series. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.